Hi, David Vizard here, and you are watching Power Attack 10. If you can give me about 10 or 15 minutes of your time, I'll give you the benefit of a lifetime's racing experience. Now, how long is a lifetime? Well, I've done an intro like this a few times, and I thought, well, I'll actually add up the years and get it right. I've been racing for 62 years. That is a lifetime. Anyway, stay tuned, and I'm going to give you the results and the moves necessary to make the exhaust port of Richard Holdener's 2.2 Chrysler head for his turbo motor work. Now, that was a mouthful. Let's hope you inhaled it all. Anyway, let's get to it. I'm sure the explanation of how a turbo works will be wasted on many of you because you're already aware of the uh, function. Anyway, I'll, I'll briefly cover it, but the thing we have to remember here is that the intake turbine, that's the one that does all the compressing, is driven by the exhaust turbine. No drive, no boost, right? So the exhaust is pretty important. What we don't want to do is squander the energy the exhaust port has the potential for. This means that, firstly, we make sure that the exhaust flows adequately for the job. And secondly, we make sure that it is driven in the most suitable way. Now there's two ways we can drive a turbo. Either a pressure wave or back pressure. In reality, it's usually a combination of both, but most street conversions of turbos that make do with manifolds, exhaust manifolds that aren't necessarily very efficient usually rely mostly on the back pressure. This will get you results and it will still produce power far more than you may expect. But if you're going to be competitive about this and get the ultimate power, pressure wave tuning is the best way to do it. Our goal here is to try and get the back pressure in the manifold as low as possible and if we really work on it, we can get the back pressure in the manifold less than the pressure in the intake. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, how, how can that be? We can't have less pressure here to generate more pressure here, right? Well, the uh, point that works for us here is that there's far more volume of exhaust that the exhaust turbo has to handle than the boost pressure that developed that exhaust. In other words, we can probably say that the volume of the exhaust at say 18 PSI is about five times what the volume of the intake is at 20 PSI. That's how come it can drive it. There's just more gases to use. One of the things that we have to contend with here is that on this Chrysler head, there's not a lot of room for extra large valves. I didn't go with bigger valves in this because this doing this head is a first time around for me and I wasn't aware of exactly where its strong and weak points were. So play safe, make the port work. So that's what we're going to do. The port has to retain good kinetic energy and flow well. That will mean that it will make the best of the energy available to turn that exhaust turbine and produce the most boost with the least amount of back pressure. In other words, we're going to do it efficiently. Looking at the stock 
and the finished ports side by side. Stock, finished. We can see how much different the ports are in plan view. This was the big bugbear here. These uh, uh, steps in the port. I've taken those out, removing the minimum amount of metal across there to end up with form, a form like this. Now, one of the things that you'll notice, now let me turn these over, right, is that there's a big cut down in port height here. There's stock and you'll see that it hasn't changed that much from stock to, to this one. The most obvious thing here is this is radiused off nicer and this is slightly bigger curve. But this reduction in the port width there, we mustn't forget, is compensated for by the fact that the port gets wider over here. So going this route although it looks very bad from the side, actually means we can put a bigger radius here because the flow is expanding here across the width and therefore it slows down. And this works very well. So there's not a lot of metal to come out of the exhausts. And uh, other factor that I need to, to uh, point out here is this is the cylinder center here and here. Right, and the gases come out and they flow predominantly on the cylinder wall side. You'll notice the factory guys put a bigger clearance between the guide and the wall here for just that reason. And I've maintained that, actually increased it slightly. Um, we'll probably see that if we look at the port end on. Right, take a look at that and that and you'll see that this bulges out quite a bit more anyway that's the principle upon which the ports were cut let's see how that functions in real life well i'm just making ready here for the last flow test on the exhaust so here we go Here's the flow at 600 lift. You'll see it's just hovering around the 140, 141 mark. Now it's time to take a look at the results. This is what our exhaust looks like graphed out. The thin line is the stock port. The thick line is the modified port. Notice there is significantly more flow at low lift. This is partially due, especially in the off the seat uh, region of the valve lift, that where the uh, 39 degree seat pays off. Why do I use a 39 degree seat? Well, it generates a steeper wave front that will hit the turbo and speed it up slightly quicker. As I've said repeatedly before, you always get a much better view of what improvements have helped the situation. Here's the discharge coefficients of our exhaust valve. Now remember we are using still the same exhaust valve size and yet we've achieved a big gain in the overall flow. The big low lift gain in efficiency shown here is due to both the seat angle of 39 degrees and the form of the seat. Also worthy of note is the fact that the uh, discharge coefficient climbs pretty steeply after the uh, 0.25D lift point. That indicates that there is a good bias on the port. Note also that the stock port had a good bias in terms of how it affected flow. It was just a little bit on the lumpy side to get the figures up. When we check the port velocity, we find that this has gone up substantially. Why? Because we've only increased the port a small amount in volume, but increased the flow quite substantially. Fortunately, this combination 
of flow and velocity results in a big increase in port energy. From this graph we see that there's a big increase in port energy. This is just what we want to be able to accelerate that exhaust turbo that much faster for more rapid boost acquisition. What you're looking at here is the overall gains we've made on the, both the intake and exhaust. The thick lines are the after and the thin lines are the before. As you can see, we've made some pretty good progress considering the valves are still stock size. Before I start delving into uh, the conclusions from this flow test, or flow tests, I should uh, ask if you guys have come to any conclusion, like, should this guy Vizard be teaching a school with what he knows about cylinder heads? Well, for those of you who thought that, then the good news is, yes, I do teach a school. It is, and I can pretty much guarantee this, it's the most advanced school on the face of the planet, period. I have not had a single occasion when I have not taught a cylinder head guy, even some of the F1 guys, something to make their engines go faster. So, so just check with the school uh, website that goes across the bottom here, and we'll take it from there. Okay, enough of these unashamed plugs for the Motor Tech Performance School. Let's get on with the conclusions about the cylinder head that we've just spent all this time uh, detailing. First, I'm not expecting to finish the cylinder head here complete, right? I'll, I'm doing all the porting for Richard and the valve job, and then I'm sending the head back to him for springing to give the appropriate uh, preload on, of the valves on the seats. Now remember with boost on the intake, the boost is trying to open the valves, right? So it needs more uh, preload on the spring. Also, the 39 degree seat needs about 10 pounds more on the seat than would be the case for a 45 degree seat. Now, what do I think we've achieved here? It looks to me, as if we have a cylinder head that not only flows better on both the intake and exhaust, but also burns the charge better and scavenges better than would otherwise be the case on many of the cylinder heads that you see ported for turbo applications. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. So check, check with, with Richard's uh, YouTube channel and see how he gets on with the cylinder head. And if you liked what you saw in this video, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, write something in the comment section, and share this with other people. Thanks for watching.